Am I the only one who gets sweaty palms before recording? Ah, oh, fuck it. Doesn't matter. So, I grew up fat. My, um, not chubby. Since as long as I could remember as a child, I would have the argument with my mom, explain to her that I was an unhealthy weight and wasn't happy with it. <clears throat> and being the great mother that she was, she always let me know that I was pleasantly plump or chubby and she loved me just the way I was. However, for me, I was never happy with it. I never felt good. I never liked anything about that. And I would constantly argue with her about my health and that I didn't like it. And as years went on through high school, I was 165 and by the end I was about 195. Get out of high school, you, know, you tend to just gain a couple pounds every year not changing your diet. And I never felt good about it. Uh, I hated it. It just crushed me inside. And it wasn't even about health. It was just self-image. It was very hard to explain to people that I, the reason I didn't like my shape had nothing to do with anyone else. And it had nothing to do with my health, really. At its core, I wanted to be able to look at myself naked and like, yeah, I'd fuck me. That is something that's attractive. And it just wasn't. And... You know, that it might be a very self-centered uh, reason, but it caused me a lot of pain for pretty much my entire life until I changed it. <clears throat> I grew up on Reese's and peanut butter, peanut butter and jellies. I was a poor kid with very little resources, and my mom had nothing to offer for nutritional knowledge. And Since I was a lonely kid, it was hard to have friends. My ADHD made it very difficult for really anyone to deal with me. So I ate uh, to feel better, you know? I mean, have you not had Reese's? They're fucking delicious, and they feel real. They feel like happiness, let's be honest. They still do. So, you know, every year you eat, if you don't change what you're eating, it gets worse. If you do change what you're eating, it can get better, but really with age, everything, you know, your metabolism is gonna change. You've gotta make real changes, so, you know, what changes, you know, what, uh, what finally motivates you to move? There was a couple of large stages in my life. Because as a child, it's not that I'm a judgmental person, although it can really seem like it. Whatever I see, my mind just yells at me, that's not right, this is what's right. And it can seem like I'm just really, really not happy. Uh, and that's not really the case, it's just... Uh, unsatisfaction. I remember as a young child, and I feel bad for feeling this way, and I really don't hold it against anyone who does. But uh, I would just see overweight people and ask my mom and ask myself, you know, why? I, I don't get it. You don't gain 200 pounds overnight. It happens every day. And I always wondered at what point would at what point would someone no longer be happy with their weight and make the change? And I had this memory from as far back as being 10 years old. It just never made sense to me. And although I was chubby, I wasn't fat. I wasn't doing anything well, but I was 10. I'm not surprised on that one. <clears throat> so as I progress and I get out of high school and I go through my 20s, I slowly but surely climb up. And around 25 or maybe 27, I get real close to 200 pounds. And as it's, as it's climbing, I'm not working out, I'm not changing my diet, I'm just kind of living, I'm not doing anything super unhealthy, but definitely not being proactive. And I just always said, absolutely not, I'm not going over 200 pounds, that is not acceptable. There's no reason for it, uh, it's just a decision, and that decision left no room for anything else. Except for the fact that I definitely got over 200 pounds before I really took it to the next level. And there were many stages to do that. The first real successful one was slow carb. At, when I first started, I was about 205, and it was awesome. The four-hour body was just revolutionary in my life. It gave so much knowledge and so many tricks and so many concepts that I had never considered before. Uh, the idea of minimal, minimal viable dosage, I mean, what is the least amount you need to do to get the required effect, which is incredibly helpful. Obviously, I didn't want to do the work. That's why I was getting 
you know, less and less healthy. So finding a way to get what I wanted effectively and without making it incredibly hard was valuable. Life is a struggle. We shouldn't have, it shouldn't have to be harder than it needs to be. Even if you try to make it easy, it can still be very, very hard. And then, you now slow carb was great. It let me, at its core, I was just having chili every day and feeling good and losing weight and it really let me control it. But that obviously fell off when I had everything. And at that point, it was, it was a strange three years. Uh, Caitlin and I were both doing retail. It was very stressful. I loved being a dad, but I also hated every aspect of it that I couldn't do to the level that I expected of myself. And that tormented me. And at its core, it was really just energy. Didn't have enough energy. And I have a very, very, very strong memory of Christmas or winter, and that's very before or after. She was three, we go outside to play in the snow. I'm not even cold. And I remember maybe 15, 20 minutes, she's having a great time. She's not ready to go in, and I'm just tired. Don't have the energy, and then I find myself making excuses to go in. And at that point, you know, it really, it really, really hurt. I grew up without a father. My daughter has one, and it was just completely unacceptable to, to let my daughter have a father who didn't have the strength and energy to really, you know, have what she, what she deserves, her father, me. Uh, I'm a great father. I have no shame in saying it. I put a lot of effort into it. And, man, I really fucking feel like shit anytime I'm not hitting my expectations. And it was at three that I just... It wasn't gonna. It wasn't gonna be allowed. I, I was done. I had known that slow carb had worked, so I found a couple of good methods. I had realized that the glycemic index, you know, the rate at which you process any kind of carbs, mwah, the way that you process any carbs, as well as how insulin worked and in storing fat, and slowly but surely, I really started to understand metabolism at a better level, which got me really excited. When I get focused and I find a specific subject interesting, I'll just go deep and I'll learn and learn and learn and learn until there's no room for anything other than full understanding of it. And through that process, you know, I found keto and I found intermittent fasting and I really took a serious approach to finding the best ways that I could get healthier, get stronger. However, still dealing with all the regular problems that I've had my entire life, my inactivity, my inability to do something consistently over a long period of time. I've got a lot of quit in me. It sucks, but if you don't accept it, it makes it real difficult. That being said, I also never give up. To me, uh, quitting just means, all right, that didn't work. Let's refresh, find a new plan, and hit it harder. Hit it like you, you know, like you did fail last time, and that shit was unacceptable. I, I don't, th I think, I think failure is always an option, but it's never an excuse. You can always keep moving forward. And for me, diet was a, a real, a real thing in my life that showed me that through consistent effort and consistent learning, and just trying to find a real, a real method to, you know, control it. Uh, being an emotional eater, in and of itself, my, my diet has always had so many more effects on me rather than just my weight, but my mood, my personality, shit, my reaction and negative feelings. Uh, you know, it's, every time I've fallen off a diet, it's almost always been because of either a bad day or a bad event. And those fucking suck. And, you know, they still happen, is what it is. And... I found that not only did I know a lot about nutrition, I was really able to help a lot of other people too. I was able to show them real easy ways to learn how to get healthy. You know, there, I failed so many different times with so many different diets. I could see all those, all those places where anyone could fail. It's, it's human nature, it's difficult. The body wants the body wants. And you've got to always be right at the gate, not 
letting your temporary wants and desires or the I deserve these conversations in your head change the plan of success. However, I'm really good at negotiating with myself and getting whatever I want. So I just had to go cutthroat. I needed to be very specific. I needed to be very honest with myself that if I didn't do it right, it wasn't going to be done. And I just wasn't about that, um, about getting it done. And now, you know, it feels great. I, at my worst, was only 215, which is great. It's 15 pounds over what I wanted, so it's way more than I'm, than I'm okay with. But now at 150, I feel happy. I love what I've learned. Uh, I love what it gives me to teach and show other people. And, you know, most of all, I really feel good about my physical form. And I think that is way more important than people give credit to. You should love yourself because of what you look like, not just be okay with what you look like. And I'm not fat shaming or trying to tell them they should feel bad for what their physical situation is. I am saying that if you aren't happy with it, I don't think you should just be all right with it. I think you should rage against it. I think the way to be happy is to not settle. You should always make waves in your life. It's a journey. Why would you not want it to be amazing? Why would it, it be good to settle? <clears throat> I don't know how I would have felt about myself if I had just stayed 215 my whole life or kept gaining weight. But well, one thing is for sure. I would have never been happy with just accepting what my nature did to me. I'll constantly fight against it. I will do whatever it takes to improve myself and I won't let excuses stop me. I will just keep pushing forward. And when I do fail, I'll look back, I'll reflect, and I'll build a better system. And with those plans, I now have better concepts that can just help others. And that seems to feel better than anything else. You know, after getting healthy, it was cool. Uh, I loved it. It's nice to have abs. Uh, you know, I love, I love being able to say that I look better now than I did when I first started dating my wife. And that's, <clears throat> I mean, that's fucking dope. What else is there in life? You only really need to look good for one person. Well, two, because I did it for myself. And then I was just real happy as a side effect that, you know, the person I choose to spend my life with also has, you know, wants to be with someone who's unhealthy. And so, again, there's no hate in my heart for people who are okay with that. I just think settling is never the best option. So, if you're unsatisfied with your health or your fitness, reach out to me. I would love to give you some help and advice. I've spent the last three and a half years diving deep into nutrition and metabolism and human physiology. It's all incredibly nerdy stuff, but fuck if I don't find it really interesting. And you know, one of my superpowers is able to consolidate a lot of knowledge and a lot of different concepts and streamline them and make them easily understood so that way anyone can take them wholeheartedly and have similar successes. I didn't actually have to work hard for what I got. I just had to find the right path and promise myself that I wasn't going to quit. And I haven't. And for anyone out there who's looking to make that same self-promise, it's worth it. You should go for it. Thanks for your time. Have a great night.